The strategy is to make you think that this Mark, is where we just let me go. ask my question. Mark, sometimes your level of arrogance really pisses yeah, me off. I'll, and I, Mark, and I, let me... Look at your shirt. But what? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh, <laughs> Turn it back. Turn it down. Ow. What happened to the companies that Mark Cuban called out as scams? You see, there have been many amazing ideas pitched on Shark Tank over the years, but not all of them turn out to be as great as the entrepreneurs claim them to be. And Mark Cuban is definitely an investor you don't want to cheat. So what happened to these companies after being called out as scams on national TV? Did they manage to survive after Shark Tank? And was Mark Cuban right when he called these companies scammers? Stick around to find out. My name is Barrett Jocks, and I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm Prom Carmichael, also from Nashville, Tennessee. In the premiere episode of season 11, two men, Prom Carmichael and Barrett Jacques, enter the tank with their weight loss snack bar called Minus Cal. The two men were hoping to raise half a million dollars in funding in exchange for 20% of their company. Minus Cal's basically just a protein bar business made with an ingredient called Coleave that helps the body block fat. Barrett and Carmichael also claimed that the snack bar would also make consumers feel fuller when eating. What they were marketing essentially is a fat blocking technology food. Now the two met at Vanderbilt University. Crom was getting his master's degree while Barrett was earning his business degree. While trying to expand his investment portfolio, Barrett came up with the idea of a healthy protein bar. Now during his research, he discovered Coleave, an ingredient derived from green tea, and then teamed up with Crom. The two tried to extract Coleave from green tea and increase the concentration by 20 times. This was done as to get the weight loss effect of green tea at a faster rate in just one snack bar. Now by 2017, they launched their official supplement bar company company with the selling point that the supplement could keep the small intestine from taking in fat. But they needed some financial push to keep their idea flying, so they decided to come on the show. After announcing they needed a $500,000 investment, Carmichael explained that Coleave isn't a chemical, but rather a natural blend that comes from fermented tea. They also gave the sharks a sample of their snack bar to taste. Lori. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Oh. From the start, Mark Cuban wasn't buying it at all. And we don't mean only investing in it. He just didn't like the product. Robert Herjavec said that the product tastes bad, to which Carmichael gave a not-so-wise response. Doesn't taste great. What? what? Carmichael then added that their product was completely natural. He probably thought this was a selling point, but Mark responded by telling the founders that natural doesn't make the product safe. Mark then accused them of falsely claiming that eating two bars will reduce 100 calories. Of course, they never said this, and Jacques refuted that claim only for Mark to say that that's what he understands from their t-shirt saying minus cow. Investor Daniel Lebetsky then asked what their business strategy was. But before they could answer, Cuban once again came at him by saying the name was the strategy. Your t-shirts say minus cow. When a consumer looks at it, what do you think he's going to think? What is your strategy? What did you Minus cow. The strategy? Their strategy is to make you think that this is Mark, where we just let me cow. ask my question. Here's the thing, though. Mark wasn't the only one that found the idea skeptical from the start of the pitch. The idea that Coleave blocked out fat just didn't sound right, so there were a lot of questions from the Sharks about this product's legitimacy. The chances of getting an investment slimmed down even more. When the Minus Cal owners made a statement about weight loss not being a guarantee, it gave Cuban even more edge to call out their product. What right. I'm investing you in, Mark. You have a bar You're investing that's in high air. fiber weight. Daniel was out by then. Kevin O'Leary would follow suit, saying that they were asking for way too much for a startup. Lori Greiner also went out because she found that Coleve idea a bit shady. And Robert said he didn't understand what the business was about, so he was also out. When it was Mark Cuban's turn, not only did he say he was out, he also called the product a scam. To everybody who's watching, don't buy it. I'm out. So Carmichael and Barrett walked off the show without any investment. After the episode air, fans later came from Mark saying he over-criticized Minus Cal and didn't even give the founders a chance to complete their pitch. And while that may be true, it was already too late for Mark to take back his words. And sadly, those words were enough to shut down the business. Minus Cal hadn't seen a lot of sales after coming on a Shark Tank, and a few customers who went ahead to buy the product all ended up giving bad reviews, with Minus Cal averaging 2.6 stars on Amazon. By the end of 2019, the brand's social media presence went quiet, and by 2020, they had completely shut down their online store. 
Today, Minus Cal has gone totally bankrupt, and the founders have gone on to pursue other careers. On season seven of Shark Tank in September 2017, Manish Sethi came on the show with his business idea called Pavlock. Pavlock's like a wristband device for habit breaking. It's supposed to make people break bad habits from overeating to smoking and even nail biting. It works by shocking the user to condition them to associate the electric shock with the bad habit until they learn to break it. It's pretty crazy, right? Well, the founder's story is even crazier. Sethi holds a bachelor's in science and technology and society from Stanford. He eventually got bored working as a web designer, so he decided to do something different. Due to having ADHD and regularly losing concentration, Sethi created Pavlock to help him stay concentrated and motivated during working hours. He would later develop the bracelet to help others like himself who would want more control over their lives and behaviors. Now, a Shark Tank producer noticed his Indiegogo campaign to raise money for the Pavlock company and invited Sethi to the show. And in 2017, he came to the tank, looking for half a million dollars for 3.14% of his company, giving Pavlock a valuation of 15.9 million. As soon as he mentioned that exact percentage, the sharks were taken aback with Robert, making a joke about it. I'm seeking $500,000 in exchange for 3.14% of my company. <laughs> 3.14%. It's pie day! <laughs> Manish went on to explain his idea, what purpose it serves, and then revealed it releases a mild electric shock when the user performs a bad habit. The sharks bursted out laughing when he said that, and Manish became visually upset. He gave a presentation explaining the well-researched and experimented scientific methods his product uses. He then passes out samples to each shark with their name engraved on the piece. They go for a test run, asking him to turn up the charge a bit. And let's just say they saw how that shock worked. Oh. 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 Turn it back. Turn it down. Ow. Wow, how do you turn I it off? I barely feel it. Manish also passed around pamphlets, giving them more detail into the scientific research. The sharks got even more curious about the working principle of the wristbands. But Mark Cuban wasn't feeling it and called Manish a con artist. You're Ooh. such a, a con artist. I'm absolutely not. Sethi denied those claims, explaining that he had a large number of established users who were getting results. He also backed up his $15 million valuation of the company by revealing he already had $800,000 in pre-orders. This led Barbara to question how much each device costs, and Manish's reply of $200 per Pavlock shocked all the sharks. After that, things began to get heated. The other sharks seemed a bit interested in this device, while Mark Cuban didn't believe for one second that this thing was authentic. The sharks began arguing with Cuban, calling the rest stupid for believing in his presentation. How could you guys be so gullible? Robert, in response, said Mark was pretending to be the smartest guy in the room, and it just kept on getting more rowdy. So rowdy, Sethi even lost his cool, grabbing his face in frustration, saying, oh, I guess you guys are making me so ADD. All right, let me talk about the... <laughs> we make you ADD. You Right. Eventually, Griner and Cuban pull out because they felt there wasn't enough evidence. Barbara Corcoran followed suit, claiming she just didn't like the product. While Robert had issues with the price and valuation, so he also pulled out. Kevin O'Leary had a bit of an interest because he studied aversion therapy as an undergrad and found the product to be interesting. He then offered the $500,000 as a loan at 7.5 interest for 24 months in exchange for 3.14% equity. Now, although it was a good offer, Sethi somehow didn't want it. Being confused, Griner asked him if he wanted a commercial for his product or a deal. Manish then admitted that he didn't want to work with Mr. Wonderful. I would take an offer from anybody besides Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary couldn't believe his ears. He felt insulted, and going out of his on-TV persona, he cursed at Manish. You're a d Get the f out of here. Oh! All to the amusement of Mark Cuban. Manish walked off the show with Kevin O'Leary still fuming at the fact that Sethi had let his emotions get in the way of making him money. Sethi had mentioned in an interview that he'd already set his mind on not getting into a deal with Mr. Wonderful even before coming onto the show. He also said he had no regrets about rejecting the deal, and why would he? The Pavlock business has soared since his appearance on Shark Tank. The company has over 10,000 new users and has partnered with big companies like Target and Bed Bath & Beyond, and has even produced more variations 
variations of the Pavlok like the Habit Aware's Keen, the Shock Clock, and the Pavlok 2 and 3 models. Most of these other products were sponsored through a number of Indiegogo campaigns that have raised almost a million dollars through thousands of backers. Pavlok has grown into a company with an estimated net worth of over $2 million. And from the looks of things, Sethi might just get his $15 million valuation. Turns out Mark Cuban isn't always right. Now we have Aaron McDaniel coming to the tank with the Tycoon Real Estate. His energy and charisma were enough to sell that idea, but not for these sharks, especially Mark Cuban. The idea behind Tycoon is a crowdfunding platform for people looking for capital to fund their real estate deals. The idea was to create a cheaper and non-traditional real estate investment method. Aaron's a man with a lot of business experience. Not only was he one of the youngest regional vice presidents of AT&T, but he was also in the top 1% of business sales managers all through his 10 years at the Fortune 100 company. And that's not all. McDaniel was also an author and a leadership course tutor at the University University of California, Berkeley. With that kind of CV, Aaron decided to come to Shark Tank in January 2015. Without wasting much time, he introduced himself and told the Sharks he's looking for a $50,000 investment in exchange for 5% of Tycoon Real Estate. He would tell the Sharks that real estate negotiations can be intimidating, difficult, and expensive. He added that these negotiations were set up in a way to get the rich the best deals. And this is where he began losing Kevin O'Leary who asked, What's wrong with that? <laughs> Aaron got on with his pitch, unfazed by telling the Sharks that his idea was a ground floor opportunity for anyone to invest in real estate, even if they wanted to go as little as $1,000. Mark Cuban immediately announced, I hate it, I'm out. Wow. Of course, that shocked everyone, including Aaron and the other Sharks, with Cuban not even getting to half the pitch before tapping out. The other sharks still had interest, though, with Kevin O'Leary particularly enjoying Aaron's discomfort. He even jokingly remarked, I smell jail time. Despite the change in the atmosphere, Aaron continued that pitch. He would go on to explain this real estate business, assuring the sharks that all the deals were legit. Next, he would assure the sharks that whoever invested in this business would get at least eight times their investment back, and also added that the return would be paid through a conventional savings account. Aaron then demonstrated the Tycoon Real Estate website, showing the various types of investments that could be placed, and even signifying the exact amount they were willing to invest. With all this being said, the bottom line of his pitch was that as soon as the targeted funding amount had been reached, virtually anybody could become a real estate tycoon. Then came the ton of questions about the business that Aaron either couldn't answer or wasn't proud of the answers he'd given. Robert drove home the obvious problem of liquidity, since investors wouldn't be able to pull out their money in a hurry, as it'll be tied up with other people's investments. Aaron tries sweet-talking and downplaying that issue by claiming that the growth and development of this business would cover for such emergency withdrawals. Now, Barbara's question was the obvious one of how many deals Tycoon Real Estate had completed so far, only for McDaniel to grudgingly reveal that only one deal worth 100000 had been completed, an answer to which Barbara mockingly asked, What was it? It was a, a garage it was space? A... Aaron was then forced to give an even more embarrassing answer, stating that the deal was for part of a house in San Francisco. At this point, he could tell he was done for. Uh, it was a it was a part of a house in San Francisco. Part of a house? But the Sharks weren't letting him off the hook that easily. Kevin O'Leary chipped in his part about the real estate investment trusts, known as REITs. These trusts do the exact same thing that his business was pitching, and REITs did it without any penalty on withdrawal, which Aaron replied by saying that REITs aren't sexy. Robert then went out. Next was Lori Greiner saying the online concept, amongst everything else, was flawed. Then Barbara also went out, calling the business spooky and way too risky. But remember Mark, who was already out from the start? Well, that didn't stop him from drilling this guy some more when he tried to save his pitch by claiming that investors with Tycoon could sell their stake after a year. Cuban snapped, 
Same. Yeah, to who? And once again, the tycoon business founder had no response. The last shark to give his decision, Mr. Wonderful, decided to be less straightforward than normal. I'll give you $50,000. I want 50% percent i going to rebrand this. I wouldn't go anywhere higher than 10% of that. He said he was interested in this, only if Aaron would completely rebrand the company. He offered Aaron's requested $50,000 and wanted 50% equity. McDaniel negotiated that 10% was the highest he was going to go, and that was it. Kevin was out, and Aaron McDaniel left that tank without a deal. However, though, you'd be shocked to see how this business has fared. After appearing on Shark Tank, the founder claimed to have had more than 50,000 people visiting his site after the episode, where later in 2015, a consortium of five crowdfunding platforms, American Homeowner Preservation, Patch of Land, Peer Realty, Crowd Franchise, and Equity Roots announced the acquisition of Tycoon Real Estate. As of 23, the Tycoon Real Estate website is still active, although the majority of the reviews are negative with a lot of people complaining about the company's lack of transparency. However, almost immediately after Aaron sold the company, he founded a mobile app for investors and crowdfunding platforms called the Access Investors Network. But this business shut down over a year later. He would go on to be CMO at IP Shark after that, before co-founding the Velocity Capital Group in January 2018 and the 10X Innovation Lab in the same year. He also co-authors a podcast called Global Class and works as a guest speaker. All in all, the tycoon real estate idea might have been a scam, but it's one Aaron McDaniel had gotten away with. Don't be surprised to see him again on Shark Tank with another one of his startups. Hopefully, he has the right idea this time. Please subscribe for more Shark Tank update videos like this and turn on those notifications. If you had a good time, leave a like, and we want to thank you for watching.